Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes. Asian stocks stutter ahead of Fed, frail yen in focus. C. Grab face slowest Southeast Asia internet growth since 2017. Panama Canal crossings will be cut back as drought worsens. For Malaysia's Anwar, Israel-Hamas war is both personal and political. Indian shares set to open higher, Fed decision, earnings reaction in focus. Asian stocks stutter ahead of Fed, frail yen in focus. Reuters. Asian stocks edged lower on November 3 ahead of the latest Federal Reserve policy decision, and the yen remained near one-year lows against the dollar, with market players watching for possible intervention by Tokyo. China's factory activity unexpectedly contracted in October, raising questions over the country's fragile economic recovery at the start of Q4. MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan was down 0.13%, Japan's Nikkei rose 2%, and China shares eased 0.15%. C. Grab face slowest Southeast Asia internet growth since 2017. Bloomberg. The internet economy in Southeast Asia is expected to experience its slowest growth on record this year, with researchers slashing near-term e-commerce spending estimates for the region by 13%. Total online spending is projected to rise by 11% this year to $218 billion, compared to 20% growth in the previous year. The slowdown is attributed to consumers curbing spending to cope with inflation and interest rates, as well as increasing competition from global and regional players. The region's entire internet economy is now forecast to reach $295 billion by 2025, down from a previous estimate of $330 billion. Panama Canal crossings will be cut back as drought worsens. Financial Times. The Panama Canal, through which over 3% of world trade passes, will be forced to cut the number of ships crossing each day due to climate change. The canal relies on freshwater to operate its locks and is currently experiencing one of the worst droughts on record. The Panama Canal Authority has said that it will cut the number of ships crossing each day to 25, down from the average of 36 and this will be gradually reduced to 18 per day from February next year. For Malaysia's Anwar, Israel-Hamas war is both personal and political. Nikkei Asia. The war between Israel and Palestine has caused a significant reaction in Malaysia. Thousands of Malaysians have protested against the bombardment of Gaza. The Malaysian Prime Minister, Anwar Ibrahim, has called Israeli actions the height of barbarism. Despite being over 7,000 kilometers away from the conflict, Malaysia has a long history of supporting Palestine. The Palestine issue is close to Anwar's heart, with him supporting the Palestinian cause since his university days. Anwar said he condemns Israel's inhuman acts of aggression and described the situation as a heinous crime. The issue has become a contest between the ruling coalition, Pakatan Harapan, PH, and the opposition, Parakatan Nasional, PN. Both the government and the opposition need the Malay Muslim vote, with Anwar's ruling coalition receiving 15% of the Malay Muslim votes in the last general election. James Chin, professor of Asian studies at Tasmania University, believes Anwar is doing something he believes in, but is also trying to gain support from the Malay Muslim demographic. Indian shares set to open higher, Fed decision, earnings reaction in focus. Reuters. Indian shares are expected to open slightly higher on Wednesday, following a rise in global stocks ahead of the U.S. Federal Reserve's policy decision. The gift nifty was down 0.15% at 19,133.50 as of 8.16 a.m., but still above Tuesday's close of 19,079.60. The Nifty 50 and Sensex both lost nearly 3% each last month due to persistent sales by foreign investors and a rise in oil prices. The Fed is expected to hold rates, but Chair Jerome Powell's commentary will be key. Foreign investors have offloaded 245.48 billion Indian rupees, $2.95 billion, worth of Indian shares in October, the most for any month since January. Biden picks Asia expert Kurt Campbell for Deputy Secretary of State. Financial Times. U.S. President Joe Biden is set to nominate Kurt Campbell as Deputy Secretary of State. Campbell, currently serving as the White House Indo-Pacific Czar, will become the second-ranking diplomat in the U.S. During his time as the inaugural White House Coordinator for Indo-Pacific Affairs, Campbell played a key role in the resurrection of the Quad and the creation of AUKUS. He is also credited with helping Japan and South Korea overcome historical disputes and organizing a summit between the two countries and Biden. 
Campbell will require Senate confirmation but is expected to be supported by Republicans. Saudi Arabia only bidder for 2034 World Cup. Yahoo! Saudi Arabia is set to host the 2034 World Cup after FIFA received the only expression of interest to host the tournament. The decision will be ratified next year, subject to meeting technical criteria. The bid comes after Qatar became the first Middle Eastern country to host the World Cup. China sending more police to Solomon Islands for Pacific Games security. ABC. China is sending additional police to the Solomon Islands to provide security for the Pacific Games, which are due to begin later this month. The move has raised concerns in Australia, which has offered to provide additional security personnel for the event. The deployment of Chinese police is seen by some as part of a wider Chinese push to displace Australia as the Solomon Islands' main security partner. China's central bank drains liquidity after overnight rate surge. Bloomberg. China's central bank, the People's Bank of China, PBOC, withdrew 109 billion Chinese yuan, $14.9 billion, from the financial system on Wednesday, suggesting that it sees the recent surge in short-term borrowing costs as a temporary disruption. The move came despite funding conditions tightening sharply in recent days due to month-end demand induced by tax payments and large government bond sales. The weighted average overnight repo rate rose 18 basis points to 1.86% on Tuesday, the biggest gain since September 28. Hello, viewers. It's your favorite observer from the Six Degrees World, Dr. Six. I hope you're all doing well and ready for some interesting news updates. Let's dive right in. In the world of finance, Asian stocks took a slight dip ahead of the Federal Reserve's policy decision. Meanwhile, China's factory activity unexpectedly contracted, raising concerns about the country's economic recovery. On the internet front, Southeast Asia is experiencing its slowest growth in the internet economy since 2017, with e-commerce spending estimates being slashed. And in a surprising turn of events, the Panama Canal will have to reduce the number of ships crossing due to a severe drought caused by climate change. Shifting gears to the political arena, the war between Israel and Palestine has ignited a significant response in Malaysia. Thousands of Malaysians have protested against the bombardment of Gaza, and the Prime Minister, Anwar Ibrahim, has condemned Israel's actions. This issue has become a contest between the ruling coalition and the opposition, both vying for support from the Malay Muslim demographic. On the Indian stock market front, shares are expected to open higher following a rise in global stocks. Foreign investors have been offloading Indian shares, leading to a decline in the market. In the realm of finance, investors are turning to Asia for private credit opportunities as high interest rates make other funding routes more expensive. In international news, US President Joe Biden is set to nominate Kurt Campbell as Deputy Secretary of State. Campbell has played a key role in shaping Indo-Pacific affairs and is expected to be supported by Republicans. Looking ahead to sports, Saudi Arabia is poised to host the 2034 World Cup as they are the only bidder for the tournament. And finally, China is sending additional police to the Solomon Islands for security during the Pacific Games, raising concerns in Australia. That wraps up our news for today. Remember, folks, stay informed, stay curious, and keep those questions coming. What are your thoughts on these news stories? Let's hear it. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.